Hi, everybody. It's Nick Astor with the Companies versus Climate Change Conference. I'm here with Nathan Nissen. He's the Principal Engineer for Sustainability at the Kohler Company. Um, Nathan, I think we've broken the record for amount of technical preparation for one of these calls, so I want to thank you for, for bearing, bearing with me and, and joining me for a few minutes. No worries. I think at least half the problems were on my end. Maybe more. Good. Good. Um, well, we got it working. Uh, everybody knows Kohler. I think probably most of the people I know have one fixture or another in their in their bathrooms. Um, but what does the Kohler company have to do with climate change, and uh, what's Kohler doing about it? Well, we've uh, thought that climate change is an issue for a few years, and we've been working on sustainability since 2008. Um, what we're looking for is a way to 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 balance the needs uh, between the environment and business and just try to bring it all together. So one of the ideas we have is that it's okay to be a capitalist, an industrialist, an environmentalist at the same time. So we're really working on programs to try to bring all of those aspects together into our company approach. And tell me a little bit more specifically about uh, some of the um, some of the sustainability issues that you are addressing, and how you've been able to demonstrate that you've made progress on those issues. Well, um, naturally, with the conference we're talking about, companies versus climate change, that's one issue that we're taking on very aggressively. Uh, we just bought into a uh, PPA. So we'll be able to cover all of our U.S. and Canada operations starting in about of 2018. So those will all be powered by renewable electricity. So that's that's one big step forward we've done. Um, numerically, it's a smaller step, but it's actually a lot more work where we're installing renewable energy at a, uh, about a dozen of our factories around the world. Uh, but those are on-site solar panels and so with the size of the property and the energy demand that's not going to cover all of our electric needs but the thing that we work most hard on and, and those are our are, are table stakes to show that we're making some progress besides that is the efficiency gains we're working on with our operations and also we're working very hard in innovation to trying to find new ways new materials to do uh, what we do Terrific. And you mentioned efficiency gains. Um, have you have you been able to measure some of those gains? I mean, percentage of improvement on energy, you know, less water use, et cetera. Are there specific things that you're measuring that you uh, can point to some progress on? Well, absolutely. Our uh, energy efficiency since we began working, uh, we measured by unit of sales. It's we've had a 24 percent reduction. So over the years, we've been able to do um, uh, very good on improving efficiency, um, and uh, that that'll come through a lot of a lot of efforts with new industrial furnaces, heat recovery. Uh, of course, you got the standard stuff with um, uh, relamping projects, uh, the turn it off initiatives. All those are aspects that have worked together. And what about the products themselves? You know, once they find their way into the into the consumer's home, um, are there ways that the, the products themselves can help the consumers save energy, save water, or or, or oh, other ways? Absolutely, we've been a um, a leader in the water efficiency savings and using US EPA calculations for um, uh, uh, for the um, uh, for the water conservation program. We look at how much water we've saved. And when we tie that back to the greenhouse gas savings on the customer side, what the customer is saving through their scope three emissions. So, so then a, a customer uses water in their house, and then that causes the utility to use energy. And then how much is the energy savings from all the water conserving we've done? And it exceeds our own company impact. Hmm. Um, so that now that's not the total impact. You got to look at the whole life cycle of a product. But uh, by delivering a product that uses 1.28 gallons per flush instead of the standard 1.6, standard in some parts of the country, uh, the savings are, are quite incredible. I don't know the number of gallons offhand, but, uh, but that's made a huge difference. And the same thing in the power side with engines that are more efficient, uh, electronic fuel ejection for the uh, small gasoline engines that they use for lawnmower services. Mm -hmm. generators that uh, that use less energy to provide electricity for our customers. So Terrific. all in all, our products make a big difference, yes. Terrific. 
Well, um, we're looking forward to seeing you down in Miami uh, in November. Uh, anything in particular uh, for, during the conference that you're looking forward to, to learning and, and or sharing and or bringing back to Polar? Well, the big thing I'm trying to figure out is renewable thermal. So I'm just trying to explore uh, how can we get a renewable natural gas that we can build into our portfolio. Uh, having done the, the large PPA that we did, I'm starting to get the picture for renewable electricity, but I just don't get it yet for renewable uh, natural gas. And so that's an area that I, I want to learn more about, and we want to try to explore it and see how can we make that make sense for the company. Perfect. Yeah, bringing that up, I, I have a feeling we'll be able to find some people that, that certainly know more about that than I do. Excellent. I'm looking forward to it. Terrific. Well, thanks so much for taking the time, and uh, we will uh, see you in Miami. Fantastic. Thanks, Nate.